I like to speak with my hands once in a while. Not be on the leash. And we have James in the booth. If it's getting too much, he will just switch me off. And all of that afterwards will not be recorded, but you will still hear me. <sighs> Wonderful. Good. Exodus 3, uh, verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Let's pray. Lord, I just ask that your word would just saturate us, not as a rule book, as a punishment, or as a, as, as, as a bad conscience, but as an encouragement, as life-giving. Speak to us now, Lord, to each one of us, Increase our faith, our trust in you, Lord. Everyone where he is in, and she is in the, in the, in the life of discovering you and, and getting to know you better. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. At the moment, I'm having a new way of doing my personal devotions and Bible reading. A uh, little different than the last few years. Also, as part of my preparations of this new assignment coming up later this year. By the way, as I already expressed in the bulletin, thank you so much for being with us in these times of preparations, especially last weekend. We are sensing and seeing your prayers for us already being answered. Thank you. That's listen I. We is listen I. Okay. But I know you are in this as well with us. And also, because of your generous response to our financial partnership request, we can, with great joy and gratitude for the awesome encouragement of you all, say that we have reached about one-third of the necessary partnerships for the two years. And this is with just two months of starting to approach everyone in one month having those Bulletins with these brochures, you know, and you fill it out and so on. Thank you. As stated from our hearts, um, Emmanuel, thank you so much. You are our church. Please pray with us. We're hoping for half of the donations, the support coming in by the end of May and the remainder uh, within another two months, by the end of July. So. This is my faith goal. This is our goal to be um, able to be sent out. There are countless th things that need to be done, and we really didn't have a clue when we answered the call at the end of 2016. Listen, I said, if we had known, we would not have said yes. Seriously. It was, it's too much. It's, it's, it's crazy. We're working two jobs at the moment. Um, And it's not jobs, it's two callings, right? Uh, but there's one God who's calling, so he, he understands that. I don't have to tell one, the other wanted me there, you know, like it's one God and calling us for Emmanuel and then calling us into missions, um, hopefully by the end of this year. We had no idea what is involved to be recognized as a global worker and then being allowed to actually departure. Although I had already been traveling to Germany as ministers in partnership with the international missions for about the last three years, thanks to the faithful and strong support of Emmanuel and our wonderful visionary leadership. So my devotions have changed this way. I used to write a chapter of the Bible every, way, every morning while writing it, meditating over it, and letting it speak to me. Often I also heard God not only speaking to me, but also having a word for Emmanuel. So several of the impulses I received in the morning devotions, and my personal ones, I already passed also on to you, 
including sermons, messages to the church. But all of this I did in English, usually using the NIV translation. I was actually able to copy the whole Bible within four and a half years. I wrote the whole Bible. It was very interesting. I'm so proud of myself. Come on. By the way, me pastors, we're a little full of ourselves. You know, like the other pastors were so nice and gentle and, and giving, but I'm a little, you know. I don't have to tell you that you hear it right now as I speak. By the way, there's another pastor who is not of my category. That's Stan Starkey. He's here today. So good to have you and to see your granddaughter being baptized. Thank you for sharing that with us and with your wife together. That's so, so awesome. Of course, Michael, you're here. <laughs> Been here so often also. Your, your kids are just amazing. They really are. I don't know that, but Liz tells me about it all the time. Because she has them in her kids' church. Say that? Hey. Okay, so that's Harold. He is an observant man and grandfather, he can tell. Saw them hugging themselves and crying after the baptism. It's awesome. I need some passion in this church. Come on, let's learn from the kids some passion about crying with one another because of the joy of the Lord and not because something tragic happened, but because of the Lord in our house, because of a special moment and experience with God. Can we become passionate again? <laughs> Mark, you're awesome. <laughs> when you say that, I believe it. And I believe it anyhow. I know our church is passionate. They show it differently often. Um, but uh, let's show one another that we love one another. More and more. Cheer one another up. That, that what people experience when they come in into our church, they will also experience from us this friendliness, this caring for one another when they have been with us for years. Because we have a good reputation of being welcoming. Let's be a church that is also still that intensely loving one another when people have attended for five or ten years. And I know we are a church that has that in their genes. So I've copied the, the Bible and uh, it was fun. I was asked, well, what will it be like going back to Germany? That's easy for you because you do everything in Germany anyways. I said, actually, at Emmanuel, I only preach in English. What? I thought it's a German church. Um, not so much. And uh, when I came to the church, they already discontinued the German morning services. It's not my fault. I could have. And, uh, well, you, you hear the Arnold in my language anyways. Um, so, uh, who can hide that we are Germans? Get, get the new pastor, right? This board, don't get a German-speaking pastor, you know, like with an accent like me. No, no, maybe you get one like that. That's fine. I don't know. I have no idea. But I'm praying and knowing that God has a great man waiting or a great woman waiting for Emmanuel. Um, Stepping into the calling that God has. Now, no, I have not even been praying to God in German. In my personal devotion, God has become an English God to me the last 10 years. And not a German anymore. And it might be new to you that you can change that. But I said, God, I need to be 100% here with all my being, and I leave everything in the past behind, that I was, used to be a German pastor and preaching German, I leave it all behind because I need to be here today for you and influence the people that are here today and they are in Canada, mostly speaking Canadian. How about that? I blame the English all the time. So, yes, I had 
devotions in English. I read my Bible in English. I copied my devotions, the Bible in English. But now God told me a couple months ago, you got to change your devotions. And I said, okay. You got to prepare for your new assignment. What is it? You got to type, write the Bible in German and in English, in both languages. That will take more time. Yep, I got it. I'm your boss. It's good. You can do that. You take more time for that. So in the mornings, I'm now typing one chapter in German, which is very difficult because it's the Canadian or the North American keyboard. We don't have any er and a eh and u. <laughs> and the y is somewhere else in the z. And the comma and the question mark is very difficult because it's somewhere different. But I have, I'm learning it off by heart because it's kind of got saying, well, will you use a, a German keyboard in Germany or a Canadian keyboard in, in Germany? And I said, well, the place where we minister is called that's Canada House. That's Canadian House. So I need to use a Canadian keyboard, not a German. That's right. I want you to train that. You want, I want you to be there 100%, not 80, 70, 50, not relaxing, taking an early retirement, none of that. I want you to be 100% there for Germans representing Canadians. And I don't want you to cheat on that. Learn it now before you go. And that's a tough one because the English is so fast. I'm so fast in, in typing English. But the German is like, I go, I say, yeah, every morning I argue with him. Because, okay, when I'm done with the German, that's it. I'm not doing the English today. That was such hard work. And when I'm done with the German, start with the English, I kind of like, okay, okay, okay. I can't finish this. It's not that much. And it's like God's dis disciplining me, um, training me to be accurate and quick in both languages. Ask my colleagues in Germany, they always tell me how much I have lost German grammar. And it's really not good. You have to work on this one, one guy said, because your uh, declaration of ministries that you do in German so that they know what's going on, what you will do there, they're not good. They have to be worked at and edified. And I said, would you do that for me, please? And he said, yeah, I will do that. But it took him two months, and he has not finished it yet. So I think my bad German is better than his non-English, uh, non-German, I mean. All right. The Bible, it's actually good because I'm using the Luther translation 2017, which was just coming out because of the, the 500 years of reformation of Martin Luther, the, um, the celebration anniversary. And so I'm even up to date with the translation. Um, don't, don't worry, like 50 million experts have worked on this one. It's not a quick fix translation. It's really accurate translation. So the good translation, and they went back to using more of Luther's typical ways of expressing things, um, which I really like. Um, not finding new modern words too much, but just going back a bit with the same kinds of words that we know today. So I'm, I'm learning German again. How about that? Um, the best training book and the most inspiring and Guiding book for a life with God and how to serve Him, how to live in this generation, for sure it is for me, even for the training of becoming a pastor and preaching well, is for me the Bible, God's words. There were so many people so far in my life that said, you need to learn this and that and Hebrews and whatever and Greek and and, and, and then you have to learn this and psychology and whatever. And I said, okay, I'll learn all that. But you know what? The best source of really being helped is reading the Bible. <laughs> reading the Bible and while I'm doing it, asking for the help of the Holy Spirit to reveal it to me. 
What are you saying? And all you hear, and, and I preached the last almost 10 years, have come from just the Bible reading, not from any special studies or so. Just from reading, being blown away by the wonderful revelation that I experienced myself and just passing it on to you. And I believe the Bible is still the best help to know how to live a, Christ, a life as a Christian. And I believe it is the best help to get to know God better because He is the author of the Bible. When re uh, reading and reflecting His Word, I'm asking the Holy Spirit, and I think you should try, and you might experience then the same thing. This has often happened, especially when starting to read and then also write in the English language at first, that I did not really understand everything. But before I got all frustrated about it, that I didn't understand this or that word, before being sidetracked to start figuring out individual words, I kept on reading and just kind of like agreed, I'll, I, I'll read them later, I study them later, but I didn't want to lose the overview of what is actually God speaking. And, um, and I continued on in reading this book. Um, and the Bible, God's book, you will need to get to know God better and better if you continually read his book, maybe, if possible, even every day. When you then go through the day and thoughts come up, maybe a thought like, what did I actually read this morning? Then allow this thought be included in your actual thinking. Maybe a sentence or a story that you read this morning. Maybe right in the moment when you actually need it. Maybe you need a reminder. So you can then start in your heart uh, as you all, all of a sudden hear a word coming up that you read in the morning. You can start using it by speaking in your heart to God about it. Okay, what do you want to tell me right now about what you spoke to me this morning? And then you start communicating with God in your thoughts. And often... That really is an encouragement and a, and a real help, especially that I know God is just right now here, not just there in the morning or last Sunday, but right now here he's speaking to me. It's just very hard for him to really get through to me with all the stuff that's going on in my life. But sometimes just the thought, and, it, and, and if, if you're opening up to that thought of, a devotion text or so, allow it in more. Don't push it aside. I don't have time for that. But allow it in. You might think, okay, I'm writing uh, an essay right now. I cannot have this thought. Trust me, the word of God put into your heart, even in the very difficult or challenging moment, might be the help that you need in that moment. Maybe not directly, but spiritually for sure. And we have some of us Many of us experience this. So you can talk to God in your heart about it. And so it becomes even more engraved in your mind and heart all these good things of the Bible. One thing that is happening as you continue following God and seek Him anew every new day, by the way, make that a habit. You get to know God more and more. And also differently, you get to know Him differently then you knew him yesterday. You can get to know God now differently than you knew him yesterday. It is not that God ever changes. We know that. It's just that you are just covering, discovering him more. You know more about him 
than yesterday if you make it a priority to seek him anew every new day. Some people just rely on what they learned from him yesterday. And they say, I know God. But listen what's happening here in Exodus as Moses speaking to God about his assignment and who he, God, is to them. Moses said to God, Suppose to go, I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God says to Moses, I am who I am. That is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord... The God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. Go, assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appeared to me. And I want to read a little further from um, from Exodus, when Moses had been before the Pharaoh the first time, instead of getting a good and favorable response, Pharaoh just made it worse for the Israelites. And so the Israelites gave Moses and his brother um, Aaron, heck, when they came out of Pharaoh's um, um, palace, and um, every one of them experienced really hard times because he dared to, Moses and Aaron dared to, to start to rock the boat of the Nile. Uh, and say, well, let's get out of here. Pharaoh said, well, I'll make it even harder for you. And then Israelites, of course, before they were worshiping God, thinking Moses and Aaron's story and uh, meeting with God is awesome. But when it became really tough for them, they were very angry with Moses and Aaron. said, like, why did you even ever go there and try this? Because it's so much harder now that you start to rock the boat. Because they were fine with being saved. They were they're fine with receiving a powerful help from God, but they were not fine with any costs or resistance. They thought, if that's happening, resistance or cost, then it cannot be from God. How often do we do that? As if we know who God is. Well, we know who God is. At least we know who God is from when we had our experiences in yesterday. In the past. For well, the people of God, it was clear that it was their new leader's fault that they were not comfortable be comfortably being led out of Egypt, but now tortured more than before the beginning of the rescue attempt. So Moses needed some encouragement as a leader after he turned to God with the complaints of the Israelites and more or less said they were right. It was true. Like, God, what's going on? Like, uh, you should have saved us, and you didn't. And the Pharaoh is even more nasty than before. What's going on with this mission? Instead of seeing motivating progress, this is nothing but a setback, and everyone, even those who didn't ask for it, are negatively affected by it. So, in Exodus 6, 2, we read the encouragement from God for Moses. God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. El Shaddai. But by my name, the Lord, referring here to the name I am, I did not make myself fully known to the past generations. 
the word fully is important here. I am with you with all I am, God says. I am with you. I do not want to do, do an extended study on the names of our God here and now, but quickly the translation of the name El Shaddai, the name that God made himself known to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. El means God. And Shaddai, like if you go to Wikipedia, which sometimes actually helps, you find chapters and chapters of what Shaddai really means. But they sum it up, kind of saying, Shaddai means God, El, Shaddai, all sufficient one. God, the one who supplies, who makes you fruitful, or sometimes they say, He is the God even in the wilderness. Meaning, despite the wilderness, He is God, the provider. And uh, maybe I'm not getting completely right here, but from what I'm observing in the lives of Abraham, the father of faith, Isaac and Jacob also, uh, is that there was, with all three generations, not necessarily an everyday communication happening between them and God. You read the stories, sometimes like Abraham lives without a God. For years and years, and all of a sudden, God speaks to him. Oh, okay. Or something happens, and Abraham turns to God and says, Help! Same with Isaac and Jacob. And sometimes even as Jacob wrestling with God, being more close with God than is preferred. But still, they were all three generations completely relying on God for everything they needed in their lives, in the lives of their family members, even those that would still come in the future, those future generations. And their faith in God, which they had all the time, even though they not always communicated with God, their faith was in the El Shaddai, the one who provides, always helps, always protects, all sufficient God. That faith was strong and it paid off because as we can see in the true story, of the Israelites, even more than 400 years later, God still answers to their faithful attempt toward God, to their faith in El Shaddai. He actually cared not only for them, but for the next generation too. That's the proof. He shows up, provides, he provides salvation and freedom from slavery. But now here in this conversation with Moses, God telling his servant, I have also this name. I am. And with this name, I had not fully introduced myself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He says, they knew about me, but not as much as you will know me now. Watch. Even though Abraham is the father of faith, God says, I have not fully revealed myself to them as the I am. As the El Shaddai all the time, but not as the I am. The same God, but not fully known, even by these patriarch generations. Full of faith, yes, no doubt, but according to God's word to Moses, they had not fully known God by the name I am. El Shaddai often only translates with God or Lord, so that you don't see that in the text all the time. The provider of everything you need. And now the new emphasis on I am. Hello, Moses, children of God. Now, here, today, I am. The first thing that comes to mind hearing this, reading this, was for me, what does that mean, I am? My next question would be, and who is I am? Come on, you all ask that. Okay, that's not an answer. What kind of introduction is that? 
I mean, okay, we're all a little philosophical and so on, of course, especially when it comes to the Bible. We know it means more and so on. But the answer to this, who is I am, is in the revelation of the name. Who is I am? Answer, I am. Answer, come closer. I am now here. I'm here. Come closer. Find me. Find out who I am. Who are you? Come. Find out now, today. Because the Israelites knew everything about the God of the past. They learned that their, their children, they survived 400 years and still knowing the God of Abraham, I, um, um, Isaac and Jacob. 400 years. They knew about the God of their fathers. But they did not know about the God of their own. I am. Today. Here. Find me. Find your God. Other translations say, not I am. And that's even more confusing. And that's where this whole translation, German-English, came in very handy. Because there it says, and some translation in English say do, not my name is I am, but my name is I will be what I will be, or I will be who I will be. What? It's like, duh, this is not an answer. What are you playing games with? It? Like Jesus answering the Pharisees, you know, like, who are you? Well, what do you think? I'm not telling, well, I'm not telling you either. He's the God of today. Every day anew, we're coming to Him and finding Him. Finding out who is God for me. Now, today, religion says it's fine what you know from God, from your fathers, and from yesterday's experience. Relationship says never enough. Ask married couples. If you don't invest today, you might lose out on that relationship because it's growing. I am today, and I will be tomorrow who I will be tomorrow. Find out tomorrow who I will be tomorrow. There's no quick fix, no, okay, I got you figured out. See you when I die. God's saying, no, no, you have one new work to do. Seek me every day. Seek me every day. And then he sent them into the desert. Is the God of the desert. Sent them into the desert, and every day they were trained and disciplined to seek Him every day. Remember the manna? Every day in you? They kind of tried to trick God or not trust Him. Well, He said it will come every day, but how about we keep some for tomorrow, just in case? You know? Good Germans would do, you know? Talking about myself, actually. You know, you just keep it, save it up. Because you then never know if God will be faithful tomorrow, but we'll never say that. We're good Christians. So we save more than we trust. Because you never know. And God showed up in the morning for the teaching reasons. To learn to live with the I am every day and not with he was. Everything that they gathered from yesterday was rotten. Not used. Not to be used. It was not no value for a life. There's no value for life what you gather yesterday. If you don't find out who Jesus is today. Nothing. Everything that you gain today for, for, for the relationship with God on a Sunday morning, if you don't find Him on Monday, the I am, 
It's for nothing what you learn today. It will all be rotten. You don't like it, but that's why we were written introduced to these scriptures and do these stories so that we learn this. Don't rely on the past. Rely on God. Rely on the God who will appear tomorrow again. I will be what I will be. He even gives that. Where others say, who I will be tomorrow. I mean, they were experts who translated this. You're not smarter than them. Don't worry. You cannot bypass that one. It's challenging us all, intelligent people who think we can outsmart God. And we save it up now so we don't have to rely on Him tomorrow. El Shaddai is great. I love him. He's such a good buddy of mine, El Shaddai. So awesome. I have faith in El Shaddai. And God says, well... Listen to me, now that we have a relationship of salvation, I'm not just El Shaddai to you. I am now, I will be, who I will be. And you better figure it out. Every morning, anew. And here comes the promise, which we heard in the baptism verse. The promise is, His mercies are new every morning. If you take old mercies out and present them to God in the mornings, God said, that's yesterday. (laughs) But I'm not yesterday. I am today. I'm here. Speak to me. Interact with me. Live with me now and in the same way live with me tomorrow. Imagine you let your wife stay the city hall after you signed. And you say, thanks, what an amazing experience. Trust me one thing. You go back one week later, she will not be there. Trust me on that one. You see that? See what we do with God? <laughs> I know who you are. We have a covenant, right? And then we go back one week later and he think, we think he's still there. He's not there anymore. He's here. Not there. He's here. Emmanuel, I am, is here now. And God is not a God just of a nation. He's your personal God too. You need to seek Him. And if we don't learn anything today, but if we get up tomorrow morning on Monday and we seek Him, one thing is for sure. We will find Him. Because tomorrow, He will be I am. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your introduction to this world through the Israelites saying, I am here today. Thank you for the promise that you will be there tomorrow as well. And through your son's words, we know you will be with us to the end of the world. Your Holy Spirit will never leave us. You're not dead. You are alive and well. And you're alive for Olivia and you're alive for Lucky tomorrow and the next day and the next day. It might be hard. It might be desert walking. But you are the Lord of the desert. You're training them, making their arms strong for fighting and for winning this life in Jesus' name. And they will have a powerful destiny, Lord. And they will see how you will reveal yourself tomorrow, too. And they will experience in an even greater way, in a developing, growing way, 
who you are. And we all know, Lord, this life is too short to fully know you. So we will keep on following you and seeking you until we see you face to face forever. That is your promise as well. So help us not to be religious, but to be relational with you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And we ask for your blessings for all of us today and for this new week. Amen.